Claire Winslow here showing you something a little bit different. I've got a black and white photo and I'm going to um, adhere it to a wood cradled wood panel. And this is a really fun technique. It works really well with uh, black and white high contrast images such as this one, which I took of my daughter in Japan. And uh, it even has a little bit of subtle color in there, uh, kind of like a hand tinted photograph. So if you like the look of that, um, watch with me and we'll make one together. And it helps to use a somewhat soft brush for this kind of process. And I'm probably going to do two coats. Uh, it's better to coat thinly than to put one really thick coat on there. So yeah, definitely two thin coats. Um, I'm, I keep brushing over and over it because I don't want any thick areas standing out. So here I am with coat number two. I've sped this part up a little bit. It's just my second coat. And, you know, it might take you a minute or two to coat each time and maybe 10 minutes to dry. So 10, 15 minutes to dry. And I like to coat the, um, the edges too, a little bit. Um, those can be left raw just to show the wood or later you could paint them if you want to. So after it's dry, I'm going to get uh, some a little bit of color because normally I just transfer the image with just the black and white print but I thought why not add a little bit of color so we'll experiment with that. Now what I've just put down here is some matte medium that's the white and then some off white kind of a buff color pink and then a blue and the colors don't really matter here but what does matter is, remember, you're adding color behind the black and white image. So I want to make the colors be kind of subtle and light in value. I don't want to do super dark colors because it'll compete with the black and white image in this process. So I'm using this titanium buff color to kind of um, soften the pink and to kind of bring it down a little bit in intensity. This is a personal choice. You could use a, an intense tube color right out of the tube, but I've chosen to put a little bit of medium to thin it down and make it more transparent. And a little bit of the off-white um, will bring down the intensity of the color. So, uh, and I want to mix it pretty well with my palette knife there. So um, I continue to um, add a little bit more of the titanium white. Actually, I'm sorry, that's not titanium white. It's a kind of a um, buff color. I'll put the color in the below in the uh, comments. And um, yeah, so I think I'll do three colors, just a suggestion of three colors. And um, yeah, I'm mixing them very well so you don't get clumpy bits. And okay, off camera, there's my blue. And I just picked these colors kind of randomly, but I thought maybe one slightly warmish color and and two um, close to primary colors, but I've just toned them down. You can see I added that buff to the blue and that's bringing it way, way down also in terms of intensity. So, and once I have the colors, what I'm going to be doing is applying them straight to the wood. Um, along with the matte medium. So I'm going to put them on the wood and, and they will all act as glue um, for the print. Again, this black and white print is a just printed out on regular copy paper, but it's very high contrast. Okay, so 
Now I'm going to apply the paint, first the medium, in one some parts. I want the colors to be only in certain areas, and so I'm putting the medium down first. And I have to work kind of quickly because this will dry in a few minutes. So I'm putting a coat of medium, a little bit more directly to the wood. I do not want this to dry yet until I get my photo down. So you have to work a little bit speedy. And now I'm adding some of the off-white. And you'll see that this is going to come through the photo a little bit. There's my pink. I'm not putting it everywhere, just in a couple of places. And then here's our blue. And then I've left an area where I don't, you know, there's some areas where there's no color. Um, and that's where the wood might show through in a subtle way. So you don't need to cover the whole plate, but you do need to put medium over the whole plate. That's important, even if you choose not to do the color. All right, and now my print goes straight down on the wood. Again, this needs to be a very high contrast with lots of blacks, meaning that where the black areas are should be really black, not gray. It's going to work better. And I'm just making sure that everything makes contact. The paper, all areas of the paper make contact with the medium. And even use a, a baron if you want, or you could use a wood spoon. You can use your hand if that's what you have. But sometimes after all the rubbing, I just like to use a baron. It feels like I'm really getting getting more pressure that way. So make sure you rub it everywhere so that the paper really sticks to sticks to the wood. But you don't have to use super high pressure, but just firm, firm pressure. All right, and now you're going to let that dry. Um, I recommend an hour. Yeah, you should put something heavy to weight it down just to make sure it's flat and smooth. At least an hour overnight is better. If you have the patience, wait till the next day. And the next day, um, you're going to take up your heavy weights and you will see that it's the paper is glued to the wood. And we're going to apply the sponge to the um, back of the print, back of the photo. And this part takes a little while because you want to be gentle with it, but you're basically saturating the, the, water, the, the paper and um, you're getting the whole um, piece of paper pretty damp. So you want it to soak through, you know, without flooding it. This takes some practice maybe, but um, I'm just using a very, very soft sponge and continuing to saturate. And you can see where the water is going into the image and you're, you know, you're trying to remove all those white areas from the print, make everything gray. And you just keep going around and around. This, this would take a good five minutes to do because you want to be really gentle with this. And what's going to happen is the paper is going to start to dissolve. And wherever there's um, black or dark areas, ideally those should stay on the wood. And you can use a sponge for a while. It is, if you, yeah, if you're a little bit too rough, you can remove parts of the image. So that's why it's good to be kind of gentle and just repetitive, just keep going. And you'll see the paper bits are coming off now. So the paper, one part of the paper, one layer of it, I guess, is starting to dissolve and come off. But you don't need to be afraid because the part that you glued is going to stay on there. There is a slight chance, oh, there I did it, of uh, if you're too rough, you can start to remove the image. So now I'm switching to my hand, taking off the edge there, and I'm going to move to my hand so I can feel it, because you can kind of get a sense when, you know, you're going, you get a sense of what is the right amount of rubbing and when you're going a little bit too far. But so you'll see a little bit of black is showing through the the figure, and that's good.
Okay, cleaning up a little bit here. And if it starts to dry, you can just squirt some water on there or use your sponge again. And again, putting your hand back in with your fingers and just continuing to rub very gently. If you, if you rub too hard, you'll remove the image. And once you remove the image, it's, you can't really put it back. But if it's just a small area, you can always let it dry and paint, which is what I end up doing to fix the area. This part's actually kind of satisfying, the rubbing with the hands. It's very textured. Cleaning up again. All right, so I'm going to speed this next part up because it's just me wiping pretty much for the next five minutes or so. All right, now I've let it fully dry. It took maybe 15 minutes or so. And I'm going to do a second round of wiping. And um, that's because what happens is when you let it dry, you'll lose the color and um, it, all the whites look like they've come back again and you can't see the, the background colors. So we'll do one more round of, now this part's even more delicate because now the paper's thin. So um, it's very easy to break through, but I'm just trying to get maybe a few more of the central areas where the, I want a little bit more paper to be removed. And you can see there's still a few more white bits. You're trying to get the white bits off. But I don't want to break through. So that's the tricky part. Honestly, it's not the end of the world. If you just break through in a couple little areas, that's fine. Um, and I'm, I'm coming to the close here, so. Now, if you break through, you can always touch up any little holes um, with some gray paint after it's uh, after the prints dry. So here we have it dry now and our last step is to apply some mineral oil or baby oil uh, with a soft, very soft cloth and again you're going to saturate it but not with water, with oil this time. This only works if the print is fully dry. So I'm just slowly and gently applying oil to the print and what's going to happen is the colors will come back because every time it dries, the white of the paper dries and it becomes more opaque. And as it's wet, or in this case, um, has the oil in it, it will make the paper translucent. And, and so we're gonna get a really lovely subtle effect with um, the translucency of the image. You can see the sidewalk on the lower right side where you see some of the wood coming through, which is really nice. And then um, there's some pink in the lanterns, which is coming through. So it's really super soft and subtle. You could definitely maybe bump up the colors if you wanted something brighter, but I kind of like this old fashioned tinted, hand tinted look. And um, I think it works well with the subject matter. Like I said, high contrast image works best. Street scenes work really well. Architecture works very well. Uh, portrait, if you have a simplified black and white image of a face, um, I recommend you simplify the values a little bit. I can show you how to do that in another video. Um, this one I actually had turned into a half tone, which I'm going to make a video about. Um, you don't have to do that though. I just liked the little dots, the look of the little dots. But you can use just a straight black and white image that's been simplified so that there are not so many values. Anyway, so this takes about five minutes or so of gentle rubbing with the oil. And the oil will dry, um, but the final art will have a nice kind of slight sheen to it because of the oil. And um, it will protect it and it'll, it'll be, it's sort of like buffing, buffing your final print. Um, and as you can see, there's a few irregularities, but I don't mind that. And also a good thing to know is there's the process will soften parts of the image a little bit. You can see where the lanterns are. Got a little bit softer. But I like that. I think it's um, kind of a cool effect. So just know that you need to pick a pretty sharp image to begin with because it will soften a bit. 
Here I'm just um, wiping the sides too, although you can also paint those if you like the look of painted black sides or gold or silver. Um, and then of course you can add D-rings or a saw -tooth, tooth hanger to the back. So I hope you get to try this and um, let us know how it goes.